What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about sugar. Is it inflammatory? One of the pervasive things I see on social these days is this idea that sugar is super inflammatory. You got to avoid it at all costs. It's going to increase your inflammatory markers like CRP and lead to all these health problems. If we look at the literature that examines sugar intake and in markers of inflammation, we do see that greater sugar intake is associated with greater markers of inflammation. If you feed lab animals high doses of sugar, they have higher levels of inflammation. The problem is most of these studies do not control for what is it? Da 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 da! Calories. Do I sound like a broken record yet? What does the research looking at sugar intake when calories are equated actually show? There's been a few different studies on this topic, some studies that specifically examine sugar intake, as well as studies comparing low GI carbohydrate intake to high GI carbohydrate intake. And what the majority of studies show is that when you equate calories between a high sugar or high GI diet in a low sugar or low GI diet, there's no difference in inflammatory markers. Most of these studies are looking at things like CRP, some looked at IL-6, and some looked at some other markers. But for the vast majority of these research studies, and I think I only found one where they saw differences in inflammatory markers, and it was only in a subgroup analysis, and it was only a really modest amount of difference, you just don't see differences in inflammation between high sugar diets and low sugar diets when calories are equated. How could this possibly be when you eat sugar, it increases insulin and insulin is inflammatory. It's not that simple. People will feed sugar to lab animals or people, look at the inflammatory response, you know, 30, 60, 90 minutes afterwards and say, oh, hey, look, these inflammatory markers went up. That means sugar is pro-inflammatory. Apparently eating is also pro-inflammatory because studies looking at fat intake and especially saturated fat also show an increase in inflammatory markers. And a lot of the social media accounts that are pushing this anti-sugar narrative or sugar is inflammatory narrative are also the same ones pushing the narrative that saturated fat is actually good for you. How does that logical disconnect work when you're saying sugar causes all these inflammatory responses acutely when saturated fat does the same thing? So does that mean that sugar's not that bad? Or does that mean that the inflammatory response from saturated fat is somehow different? Or which one is it? Well, the reality is, is that short-term acute changes in things like inflammation or insulin do not reflect what happens with regards to long-term insulin sensitivity or inflammation. You know what is inflammatory? Adipose tissue. So as you expand adipose tissue, your adipose tissue actually secretes adipokines and can increase your levels of inflammation. The best way to reduce your levels of inflammation is to reduce your adipose tissue if you're overweight or obese. You can do that through many different ways. This idea that there's an anti-inflammatory diet out there. Maybe you could argue that like people who are eating like high amounts of omega-3s are eating an anti-inflammatory diet. But in terms of like carbs versus fats, doesn't really seem to make a whole big lot of difference when calories are equated or when people lose the same amount of body weight. I am not saying that you should eat sugar because I know what you trolls in the comments are going to say. They're going, wow, you know, this from the guy who's sponsored by Pop-Tarts. First off, I don't even like Pop-Tarts. I don't know where that myth started. Now, Tim Tams, that's some good stuff right there. I could really take Pop-Tarts or leave them, to be honest with you. But if I do eat Pop-Tarts, it's usually just to troll you guys, being honest. So I'm not advocating for the consumption of sugar. In general, I think sugar consumption should be relatively low, but not because I think sugar itself is inflammatory or detrimental to health, but because it doesn't induce a lot of satiety. And quite frankly, it's very, very palatable and easy to overeat leading to more calories, more adipose tissue, and that is inflammatory. Another thing to keep in mind is people who eat more fruit tend to have lower levels of inflammation. Fruit has a lot of sugar, so how does that work? People say, well, that's natural sugar. It's still basically the same chemical composition, 
Sucrose or table sugar is simply a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule linked together. During digestion, it gets cleaved and turned into fructose and glucose. Guess what most fruit sugars are? Glucose and fructose. So please explain to me, are you saying that somehow that cleaving of that specific bond induces this inflammatory cascade that causes all these problems? It certainly doesn't make sense to me. I'm not saying you should eat more sugar. I'm saying if you do want to have some sugar, it's probably not going to turn you into an inflammatory bomb instantaneously. You'll probably be all right as long as you're just not over consuming it and over consuming calories. In fact, a few years ago, back when I was consuming around, I would say 80 grams of sugar a day, I got my CRP done and it was actually barely above the detectable level. So, hey, you guys like anecdote? There's my anecdote. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section or just tell me how much I suck because you know I love to hear it. Uh, and make sure you check out our excellent products and services in the description as well as the citations. All right, guys, I'll catch you next week. Hope you have a great one.